guess I'd have to start with Jerry Creighton, a gentleman in that painting. Um, we moved here in 1995. We'd been, I'd been coming down since 1990 for racing log canoes and started reading more about them and the history of them. And uh, when it was obvious that they had at one time been work boats, I started looking at Dead Rise work boats with a different eye, so to speak. Even though we'd been going to all the docks and shooting pictures of things that I didn't know what they were. I liked the arrangements of tools or the near abstractions of things. Uh, it's kind of interesting going to a place like that where you don't know anything and you just shoot purely out of in ignorance and innocence. Um, but I wanted to know more about it. Uh, so 1995, we're living in a farmhouse just outside of Chestertown and the fog is rolling across the fields like smoke from a forest fire. I mean, it was impressive. And I looked at Phyllis and said, I got to get down to the docks. And I took off. And I ended up at Long Cove. And I was probably driving 70, 80 miles an hour in the fog. But every now and then it would open up. And you'd see it just this fog just come blowing out of these trees, just like smoke, literally like it was on fire. And I was in a hurry because I wanted to get down there before the fog disappeared. So we get there, <clears throat> I get there, and they're all frozen to the docks. There's ice and there's fog. But the docks are full of watermen working on their boats, talking to each other. I, you know, they, they need to be outside. They don't want to be at home, bored out of their minds, so to speak, or with a honey-do list facing them. So they, uh, you know, and I got out of the car and I'm walking around taking some pictures and they're always watching somebody they don't know that has a camera. And the litany of questions, who are you? Who are you shooting for? What magazine? What newspaper? Are you with a TV station? Are you a writer? Uh, and last, always, no matter where you are is, are you, where, are you here with the Department of Natural Resources, the state? I said, oh no. <laughs> but, so I passed the litany, so to speak. And um, word went through boat to boat to boat to boat down the dock before I even started walking on it. And, and I always asked at that time if I could take a picture. And they seemed all right with it. And I get down to this one boat, and it's at the end of the tee there. And I'm taking pictures. And the gentleman looks up from the boat and goes, so who are you? And what are you taking pictures of? And are you from here? And I said, no, we just moved down here from Pennsylvania. He said, so you're basically just a damn chicken necker. <laughs> and I said, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, because it got real quiet when he said that. That is an insult, chicken necker. And I said, I don't recreationally crab. I don't recreationally fish. I don't recreationally oyster. That's your guy's livelihood. I'm not taking money from you or food from your families. And he gave me a piece of paper with his name and his phone number on it and said, call me in April when we start crabbing. And that was the first time I got an invite on the boat and the first time that I ever got out. And that was with Jerry Creighton and his son. And Jerry's off the water now. His, I think it was a combination of carpal tunnel and bad knees and back and whatever. Because this business will destroy you eventually. But that's how I got started. So it shifted then from photographs of boats at the dock and, and being recognized by people. You know, oh, you're back again, you know, but not... In, not a conversation. Uh, watermen are, for the most part, a very insular group of people, so it's hard to get in, get accepted in there. So the focus started to shift from people working on the boat, gear that I had taken pictures of that I didn't know how it worked, but now I know why a screwdriver is stuck in a bushel basket. It's for getting the crab out of the, out of the, the crab pot. Uh, all these things started making sense to me, and eventually. Um, there was a show we had with Carla that year. It had a painting of um, Willie Beck and his father oystering on the Chester River. Now, Willie's passed away. And the ladies, married wives, girlfriends of watermen, came to the back door of the farmhouse we were renting and uh, said they'd seen the picture of the painting in the newspaper and they wanted to buy it. They take, they passed the hat around. And they wanted to know how much it was and I said, <laughs> Special deal, and I mean, absurdly low price for Waterman. But, I mean, it just made sense for me to just make it a very accessible price. And I said, and the best part is that it's framed, too. And they took it. It worked out great.
I got an invitation to the wedding reception because they were buying it for uh, Willie and his wife, Roz. They got married. They got kept back from Las Vegas. There was a reception. I got invited and I started getting phone numbers because the painting was at the reception. So things started to snowball in a really unique way because a lot of these guys, not all of them are crabbers, some of them are fishermen, not all of them oyster, um, though a lot of them have moved in and out of those different fisheries. And um, I'm still very hesitant about painting them in the manner that this show shows them because there's no boats in these pictures. It's all, it's all watermen. And, and it's all the watermen that I've known and worked with for close to 30 years. Some of them are, have passed away. Uh, some of them are no longer working on the water. So there are no boats, and there's no emphasis on gear, no still lifes on gear. It's, uh, it's these guys, pretty amazing people. I'm not painting people. I'm, you know, I'm on the log canoes, and I've been racing on them, but I painted more of the boats from a distance, and if they were people, you knew them. Uh, I called it portrait by posture because everybody knew who was who on the boat by the way they sat or their position on the boat. And that's how I painted a lot of watermen for a while. They were not, they're not cliches. They're not the figure study that stands in for a waterman. For me, these are real people. Um, and in a way, we were talking earlier about Thomas Aikens and the age of heroism with people getting really good at what they do. And as he started to paint them, like the clinic of Dr. Gross, which is just a remarkable painting. He was a leading surgeon and whatnot, but he put him in his environment. And painting these guys in their environment, this was a great opportunity. And Carla gave that to me earlier this year. So I'm painting for my, my annual downrigging show, and I'm probably 20 paintings into it. Carla had the idea for us to do a show, because I had been painting near portraits of watermen for a while. If you go through the show and look at the dates, there, there's some pretty old paintings in here. But they were kind of like aberrations in a way. You know, It was just something that uh, I didn't do, was not comfortable with, but they were part of a bigger picture and needed to be in it in a recognizable portrait-like format. So I said, yeah, sure, we'll give it a try. Uh, so now I was painting for two shows, this one and the one in downrigging. So combined, putting all these together, there'll be 56 paintings in downrigging. This show has 26 paintings in it. Um, these guys, I think they're mildly bemused at that they actually are a subject for a painting. Um, because Carla posted this show on Facebook, it's all over the place. <laughs> they saw there's a gentleman up in the front part of the gallery uh, his nickname is Muscles, and it's Captain Muscles on Facebook, and it's the painting. So I know that they're all looking at these, and they're all picking each other out and everything, and I hope that they come to see the show in person, um, but it's, it's not their normal venue, and it's a, it's a cultural leap, but uh, which reminds me of a show Carla, an opening Carla did a long time ago that was just for Waterman only. And they brought their wives and their moms and dads and, and whatnot. And some of them even brought little tomatoes stuffed with crab meat and things, you know. It, 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 was, it was so freaking cool. But I had to go down to the sidewalk and shoo them up the stairs into the gallery. Come on, guys, there's nobody else up there. It's just you guys and your wives. And put all your differences aside and just have a good time. 